Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about wood walls. You know my position on drywall that we just don't use it in any of our rooms. We don't uh, like the, the sound uh, quality that it does for mid-range frequencies. And it's funny because I work in a lot of studios in Los Angeles that were built back in the 60s and 70s. And not many of those use drywall. If they did as the underlayer, the outer layer is, is always some other kind of treatment. So we use in, in all of our designs a three quarter inch ply and it's a nice uh, material to use for, for a lot of reasons. One, it has multiple layers so you get vibrational management and you can buy really quality material these days. There's some beautiful veneered plies now that you can get and we use a lot of cherry in our builds. The nice thing about cherry is we kind of, uh, if we're, we're building locally in, in, in the LA and Phoenix area, we'll take the ply sheets and we'll put them out in the sun for a half hour, let the ultraviolet uh, energy uh, from the sun strike them. We bring them back into the shop, let them cool down, then we hit them with a clear coat. And what that does over time, it really makes the grain pop. It's wonderful to have a room full of wood that's beautiful and then the grain starts to mature and, and pop on you and change. It's, it's real uh, beautiful material. So it's expensive. I think 4x8 sheet now, some of the ones we use over $120, $30, $40, I think. So, of course, then the counter argument is, well, how do you manage the RT60 or the reverberation times? Well, you have the same problem with drywall. Drywall absorption coefficients are almost non-existent. So you still have to manage RT60 with drywall. You have to manage a little bit more uh, RT60 with plywood because it's a little harder material. But you're going to manage it anyway through the application of the type of material, the amount, and which surface area you put it on. Remember our acronym? TAP. Type, amount, and position. Okay? So we're always going to use absorption to manage reverberation times. Now, take a look at this picture. It's kind of a unique approach to the wood wall and what this client has done. <laughs> when I saw this picture, I was like, wow, that's interesting. And he's taken wood planks mm -hmm. and he's, as you can see in the picture, and he's just lined them, standing them up against the wall. And he said, the sound is amazing. It's so much different. And he says the tone of his mid range and his mixes, especially on that rear wall is, is completely different, completely changed. So there's a real world application, uh, not for everyone, of course, uh, to, to stand pieces of wood against their walls. But nonetheless, I think you get the idea and this illustrates the difference. And the walls behind uh, the wood that he put in was um, drywall. So he worked in this room for five years, put the wood in, heard the big difference. So it, and he said, he goes, you're right, Dennis, it does make a big difference. So it's always nice to get confirmation in the field from the things that we talk about. So, and then a lot of people say, well, is it a diffuser? Well, no, it's not, because remember from past videos, diffusers have to satisfy five really rigid criteria when it comes to sound diffusion. Uh, these five rigid criteria involve decay, spatial irregularities in frequency response, equal distribution of reverberation times throughout the room. There's a whole litany of things that have to qualify. And no device that's shaped in a hemispherical direct direction is going to be uh, a diffuser. It's going to be more of a sound redirection device. So energy is going to strike and then it's going to leave. Strike and leave. Angle of incidence equals angle of refraction. Okay? It's not going to be able to satisfy these five criteria. It's not going to help really uh, satisfy decay, exponential decay rates and things like that. So. And let's look at the, free, I mean, if the thing is four inches thick, what's that? 0.33 of a foot divided by 1130, the speed of sound, we get 3,400 cycles. Step out of the frame a little bit. So it's going to get 3,400 cycles. If we go down in the curve a little bit, it's two inches. Okay, that's 0.25 of a foot, 4,500. So what are we really doing here? Even if it was a diffuser. You know, even if it was a diffuser, it's 3,400, 4,500, what are we doing? That's, you know, getting into the high frequency range. So do we want a device that's just redirecting high frequencies? No, we don't. So it's really not a diffuser. 
it's more of a sound redirection device and it doesn't really have applicability for middle and uh, lower frequency ranges. So these devices, you know, a lot of companies, they have these hemispherical devices and they call them diffusers. You have to be very careful. Just remember diffusers must satisfy five really rigid criteria. So I thought this was a fun uh, idea that the client did and he still uses it today and this is an income producing room so he makes a living in this room. So wood walls, kind of fun. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.